Good morning. Hey, good morning. Scrub your back for you so you don't get my hair wet. You're up. Oh, if you want to pick up a few extra dollars, report every morning at 8.15. Oh, heaven, heaven. Oh, you can set your own price. Move back, you're splashing. Hmm? Ah! Saved by the bell. Hello? Uh, just a minute. Who? Yeah. Hold on, please. Uh, Neil? Huh? It's somebody named Charlie. He says it's urgent. Tell him I sent the check yesterday. He still wants to talk to you. I'll call him in a couple of hours. Come on, you haven't finished my back. Charlie, everything's important. Somebody sneezes, it's a national disaster. Hey, boy. Whose dog is that, anyway? The neighbors. I don't think they feed them. Come on. Come on. Come on. Here you go. Come on. about five you'll be here I don't know well that could mean anything from I'll be out walking the dog and lots of luck I'll see you around it doesn't mean either it just means I need to pull back for a while you mean just like that all of a sudden I didn't say out just back I need a little distance before I get in too deep. Oh. Now, sounds like the uh, good doctor's been earning his keep this past week. I don't need an analyst to tell me I'm starting to repeat myself. All right, so you had a lousy marriage. Who hasn't had a lousy marriage? But I had two. So, besides, I'm not talking about marriage. I'm talking about getting too involved too soon. And what makes it too soon, huh? We've known each other for two months, right? Mm-hmm. And I still don't know if I'm just your interior decorator or a long one-night stand. And in case it's more than that, I want to be ready. Doesn't mean I won't be back. Oh, wunderbar! That is the kind of definite maybe I would expect from a disciple of the eminent Dr. Farben. <laughs> At $35 a clip yet. I told you Farben has nothing to do with it. Oh, then your astrologer, maybe? I'm just, oh, uh, the village sorceress. That's who it was. Uh, some reliable type like that. Don't that's, humor that's it me. Was. It might work. Look, Jeannie Strait, this might have started with your, uh, you know, picking some wallpaper for the living room, but uh, it's gone way past that now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for both of us, and that's what scares me. All right, let's talk about it at lunch. You said you wanted to get to know me better, didn't you? I guess I did. Mm -hmm. I'll see you at lunch.
Good boy. Good boy, huh? Come on, boy. Here, here. Here, here. Here you go. You hungry? Huh? You want a biscuit? There you go. Come on. Come on. That a boy. That a boy. Good boy. Good boy. There you go. Here. There you go, boy. Come on. Come on. Stay. Stay. you I was afraid I missed you mrs. glass oh uh, I found these in your driveway no one named glass here I'm mrs. Risman well isn't this 407 South Euclid north sunsets the dividing line oh north sunset of course and that poor lady's been waiting for me over there all this time what were you doing in my backyard oh I'm with Stein Realty mrs. glass called our office and asked if I could stop by and discuss selling her house well, as I said, this is 407 North. So how could I expect her to be here, right? I mean, she doesn't even live here. 
What company did you say you were with? Uh, you know, I tried to look at the backyard and the pool area, but your dog had other ideas. You should give Rover a gold star. Prince, he's been to obedience school. Uh, can I give you a hand with that? No, 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 no. I'm fine. Who did you say you were with? Oh, I'm with uh, Stein Realty. Downtown Los Angeles. We're into industrial property mostly, but in this tight money market, we're taking anything we can get. Residences, acreage. As a matter of fact, I was thinking I might try to list that little lemonade stand down the street. <laughs> it's a lovely place you have here. If you ever think of putting it on the market, please give us a call. No, we're very happy here, but thanks all the same. Well, no offense. Thanks again. Anybody home? Come in. I didn't hear your truck. Oh, I thought you were Mr. Benedetto, the painter. No, I'm Charlie Herod, the lawyer. Yes, you called. Several times. Is he home still? No, he had an appointment, but I gave him your message. Which he chose to ignore, obviously. Um, would, you, uh, would you mind if I call my office? Oh, sure. Uh, uh, Come on in. Well, that is, if you can uh, work your way through the debris. Well, it's not all that bad. In fact, it looks rather promising. Miss, uh... Oh, sorry. Jeannie Melville. Miss Melville, thank you. And in case you're wondering, I'm the decorating consultant from a furniture store in the valley. Neil bought a sofa and some chairs from us. Oh. Did I say I was wondering? You looked as if you were. You still do, just as I'm wondering. What? About me? Mm-hmm. About why you'd take the trouble to come all the way out to a client's house, unless it's really urgent. Well, no. Did I say it wasn't urgent? What you said was, whatever it is, it'll wait until you find Neil. Something like that. Well, then, I guess we could call it a dead heat, huh, Mr. Herod? You're dying to know if I'm just here hanging wallpaper and I'd like to know if Neil's in some kind of trouble. You're all right, Miss Melville. I guess you'd call it that. Dead heat. I can. Yes. Well, I'll try to find the photographs in my file, and I'll phone, I'll phone you right back. Right. Bye. Well, what have you got? Three detectives right behind me. You have a grotesque sense of humor, Neil. You really have. surprises me. The stone is a chip, the one on the right. It'll lose some of the weight in recutting. 
Oh, really? I didn't notice it. Hell, you didn't. You're better without the glass than I am with it. Now, this watch. It's just full of surprises. Anything to make your day a little brighter, huh? What's it worth? Well, I would say new retail, about 3,000. As it is, perhaps a third of that. Bless you for an honest man. You had it appraised already. The department store. The department store. That sort of thing's going to backfire, Neil. Those employee types are highly suspicious. How much will it work? 3,600. That's stretching it. Make it an even four. The risks that I run, I'll make it an even 3,600. Done. You know, it amazes me how you always work in broad daylight. <laughs> so, what, are you running a seminar? <laughs> you know, I'm just curious. Well, that's the only way to go, Herm. During the day, nobody pays any attention. All the doors are open, people coming and going. The man of the house is at the office. You did say, uh, 3,600. Mm -hmm. And I count it right. I'd like to see some pearls. Opera length, I presume. What do you think? Well, I'm prone to suggest opera length for the close that they're showing this year. I've got some beautiful pearls. As a matter of fact, I have a beautiful emerald. It's a cocktail ring. Finest color that I've seen in years. Herm, there's no soul on any stone except a diamond. saddle on you, you could enter a jackass race. Yeah, but would I win it, Charlie? That's the real question. How long you know me, Neil? Six wonderful years. How many times did I call you before nine? I got back to you, didn't I? Now, you listen good. I got a call from Reno this morning. Congratulations. You lost a lot of money there last week. So? You lost more than you had. You wrote some checks, all bad, $9,000 worth. What are they calling you for? They're calling me because you use my name as reference. They're calling me because they'd like their money back. Tell them I'll have it in a few weeks. They want it by a start of business tomorrow. Get an extension. Charlie, no hysterics. It's not your style. You really don't know what's eating you, do you? I'm referring to the fact that you're gambling again for any amount. I know what you're thinking, Counselor, but fear not. Well, that's a nothing promise. You get in the hole again, you're back at the old stand. Now, stop worrying, will you? I peddle insurance these days, remember? Yeah, you peddle insurance. You make a pretty good living at it. Not good enough to cover gambling losses like this. I'll come up with it. You better, Neil. I don't know how many times I gotta remind you. You are a man with two convictions. You employ me to help you get straight so that hopefully one day we can make a legal attempt to recover that little boy of yours. He's the reason I bought the house. Proper domicile. Great. Now, you explain to me how we're gonna handle this Reno problem. They want it tomorrow at 8 a.m. If they don't get the money then, they're gonna file a report in your bad checks with the DA's office. You're trying to rattle me. No, I'm not, Neil. But just suppose. Suppose that report only got as far as your parole office. If I can't come up with all of it, will they deal? Well, I'm betting against. <laughs> Try. Would you come with me? Reno? If I can. Good. I'll call you. Neil, uh, it's a wasted trip. You can't come up with at least six or seven. 
I got 3600 Great. Well, buy your lunch? No. Thanks, I got a date. Oh, of course, it's Friday. It's your day with a man. Right. I'm late already. Excuse my uh, presumptuousness, but that's a face that my cameraman would bathe in soft yellows. Good for him. My name is Pete. And believe me, I'd be making the same speech if your date was here already. Go away, Pete. You smell like gin. I've invested vast sums of money in acquiring that scent, Miss, uh... Really, Pete, go away. Are you telling me that you have no interest whatsoever in testing for us? Or, uh, maybe you don't condescend to us uh, showbiz folk, huh? No, I'm just nicely telling you to remove your hand or I'll ask the maitre d' to throw you out on your can. Whatever you say, Butch. For the record, Neil, you staying straight? Oh, me, Jack? <laughs> no way. As a matter of fact, I uh, burgled a house on the way down here this morning. Shh, walls have ears. <laughs> uh, got another one for you. No, I do not consort with known criminals. No, not that one, not that one. This is a little heavier, so take your time with it. You told me you paid 32000 for the house. Yeah, that uh, 5000 down and a 7% mortgage on the balance. Why, did somebody tell you I overpaid? Oh, well, these latest figures do, Neil. Declared income for last year was a shade over 13,000. Yeah, 13, that's right, yeah. Well, starting from scratch the year before, how did you spread it around and still accumulate the five? Uh, for instance, income tax, car purchase, the hundred a month you send in support of your son. Look at those threads. Well, I got a pretty good expense account, Jack. Uh, you know, lunch and uh, drinks. Anything connected with hustling a insurance policy, gas mileage, uh, the clothes I get wholesale through a friend of a friend, you know, one of those numbers. But you're right, Jack, it's a tight squeeze. You're telling me. If somebody pushed me, I could come up with specific answers. No, no, no. Nobody is pushing you exactly. I just want to be sure in my own mind so that when I make out my quarterly report, there are no question marks after your name. Oh, ah, well, I hope not. I'll be eligible to apply for custody of my boy in another year, Jack, and I need you in my corner. I want to be you. Oh, yeah, extension 259, Cutter. Yeah, Linda, I'm on the way. Yeah. My lunch date's waiting for me. <laughs> Same time next month? No, uh, we're not finished yet, Neil. Fact is, you were a half hour late. Oh, yeah, well, I'm sorry. So I'll be here at 9 in the morning. We'll kick it around some more. Yeah, that's your thing. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, you have to come back after me. That's all right, man. Okay. I thought you said you were clean these days. I am. All right, before you make out your report, go to the clinic for a Naline test. Yeah. Say, you don't have a smoke copper chance, do you? Uh, no, cigarette? I'm sorry. Sure, you sure. I've seen you here before a couple of times. They're beautiful and extravagant. They look real. They are. Now, don't say I wish you hadn't. Exactly my next line, except that I mean it. They complicate things, Neil. Well, why? It's really very simple. Just tell Dr. Farben that, uh, that you're being bribed. Oh, huh? really? Yeah. Well, it's just... I, say, I need somebody to celebrate with me. You sold the pension plan. Two-thirds of it. One signature to go, and that's waiting for me at Reno. Well, bravo. Huh? You intend to go up there today? Well, I don't know, if the bribe works. Oh, Neil, I don't know. I've got a... 
three o'clock appointment at the shop and... Yeah, we'll just let big Bruce handle it. I, I promise to get you back in time for work tomorrow. But don't send me up there alone. Please. You just sold me. You won't be sorry. Well, I am a little already, but that's all right. Because any man whose lawyer comes out to his house to find him must have problems. Charlie, what did he tell you? Not a thing. That's why I'm going. Oh, because I've got problems? Because you've got problems. <laughs> and strong, delicate hands and a smile that completely mystifies me. I like this is what I want you to do. I want you to put these pearls on. I want you to go home and pack. We just have time to make a three o'clock flight, okay? Well, I love them. Now that's something to discuss with Dr. Farman. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, look, if you don't mind, I'm gonna invite Charlie to go with us. Oh, he introduced me to the man in Reno. Oh, who hasn't signed yet? Right. So you try to reserve three seats, and I'll go and pay for those pearls. You weren't even sure I'd keep them? No, I wasn't. I took them on approval. The more I know you, the less I know you. Good. Aren't you the busy one? Out visiting again? No. I need another $4,000. I need it now. Mm, there's a lot of day left. You can always gather some more goodies. I can't work anymore today. I just don't feel right. Rule number one, if you're off stride, go home. Since when have you become such a stickler? The money, Herm. You can take it off the top of the next couple of scores. I can let you have one. Oh, come on. You've got more than that. I may have another purchase to make this afternoon. Now, 1,000 is all I can let go of without goods. Do you want the one? Yeah, I want the one. Thanks. Neil! Will you take care of the bags? I'll check in. You know what time the meeting is? No, not yet. Charlie's in his room setting it up. Can I fix you one? No, I'll go do some shopping. I'm sure you want to wait this out alone. Well, what makes you think that? The way you invited me in the first place for a celebration. Isn't that after the battle? See you later. Your timing's as good as your legs. You keep it clean. Our den mother might misconstrue. Hi, Charlie. Hi. You see what shows are playing in town to take your pick, all right? Do I make reservations for two or three? No, forget about me, Jeannie. I'm flying back right after the meeting, which, incidentally, is only six. Right. Good luck. Bye, Charlie. Bye. She's a nice lady, amigo. I hope you've been straight with her. She doesn't know I have a record, if that's what you mean. Well, if I were you, I'd level, especially with her. She looks breakable. She is, and I will. If you get me through the day. I'm thinking of marrying her, Charlie. She's good for me. She'll be good for my son. Neil, it, it seems I'm always preaching at you. And I am, but uh, aren't you getting a little ahead of yourself? Don't you think I'm entitled? Well, I... I just think that you're boxing yourself in before you're ready for a custody hearing or a new wife. You haven't been clean long enough, Neil. I don't even know if you're clean now. You don't think I can make it without stealing? I don't know whether you can or not. Yeah, well, I do know. You talk to the man, how did you read him? Well, I think anything short of the whole 9,000 is uphill. We're plenty short. Thanks for the pep talk. You don't pay me to bully. I'll be stretching out in my room. Pick me up at 5.30 sharp. Yeah, yeah. Coming out. He's got 11 now. 
$100 on the 11. All right, 11, be there. Come, 11. Shooter coming out. here you're putting me on I dropped almost four dropped four <laughs> you'll probably drop this too so I'll take it I want to wipe out the whole bill Charlie I almost did it well, listen you've been proud of me I started out with six straight passes yeah, we'll talk about it in the way over it's now quarter of and we uh well it's gonna be rough enough without being late yeah Charlie uh, go without me what you can break it to him alone no no wait you're eight grand short, and you don't want to put in a personal appearance. Now, I'll screw it up. You go over there and give him the $1,000 and tell him I'm good for the rest. Now, you listen to me, Neil. Look, I'm not going to stiff him. You can't offend people who can hurt you. And they will hurt you. Believe me, they will. If you don't show. Ten years of hard time. I'm betting the other way, Charlie, and it's my life. It sure is. You will go without me. Of course I will. Because... The thing I do, finally, is whatever you ask me to do. Do you know why, Neil? Because you make such a fortune off me. Because any man who spends 42 months of his life in a concrete room with an iron cot and bars on the window is entitled to a little rooting interest. And that is why I do whatever you ask, even when it kills me. Just stall the man, Charlie. You can do it. Stall the man. Such a dreamer. Self-employed, right? I mean you, buddy. You work for yourself, don't you? What's this, part of the entertainment? <laughs> no, that's my hobby. Figured out what people do. My wife thinks I should have been a regular on What's My Life. Terrific. Now, in your case, I can't peg the specific business. A distributorship, maybe, someplace. But you look like a real self-starter. Yeah, small grocery store. It figures. Midwest someplace. 
Michigan. Saginaw. You're single. Right? <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> that was easy. No ring. You got no ring on your finger. That's how I nailed you on that one. You know, a lot of people think this is a weird hobby. Maybe sick even a little. But I think it's good practice for my business, which is credit manager for a chain of appliance stores in Jersey and upstate New York. I mean, you got to be able to read people one, two, six when they come in and ask you for $700 worth of equipment. And all they want to lay on you is a down payment of a big buck and a half. You may as well give it back, fellow. I lost the wad playing 21. Some cross. <laughs> well, you must be Charlie Harrod. You look exactly the way a Charlie Harrod should look. I'm Jim Callender. How do you, Mr. Callender? It's a pleasure. Can I pour you a drink? Uh, what you have there is fine. There, I just made that. Thank you. I thought uh, Mr. Wilkerson was going to be with you. Oh, yes. Uh, well, he intended to. I mean, that's why he's here in Reno. But he got himself involved in a personal bind. Mm. Well, I understand. As long as he came up with the money. Well, sir, not, not all of it. Uh, he didn't quite have enough time. How's your drink? Drink's fine. How much did he raise? A thousand. Well, he should have sent two Charlie Harrods. Man. Well, I know this doesn't make much of a dent, sir. But he's good for it. All of it, I promise you. Oh, I believe you, Charlie, because the morning line on Charlie Harrod is A1. But I don't particularly like being waltzed around, and I think your friend is waltzing me. Because the morning line on him is not so good. You see, Mr. Callender, he thought that maybe I could make a deal with you. But he, he was afraid that he might screw it up. Too good to ask for a favor. Oh, no, sir, it isn't that. Well, I can't trust a man I can't see. <sighs> Give him a week. Why? Because he's on probation. Because if you process those checks, he goes inside for 10 years. Well, that's no reason to give him a week. That's a reason for him to be here. I mean, if I were in his shoes, I would be here. And I think you would, too, wouldn't you, Charlie? Probably. But he's not. I like you, and I'm going to tell you the truth. I think he's shafting you, sending you over here to get him off the hook. Now, is that the kind of person that I should trust with $8,000 of my money? I mean, would you? Well, sir. Neil. Neil, uh, this is... James Callender, Neil Wilkerson. I'm glad you can make it. Sorry I'm late. Sorry, forget it, you're here. Yeah, with my hand out. <laughs> or didn't Charlie tell you yet? Oh, he told me. Would you like a drink? Oh, no, thanks. Well, maybe some more d'oeuvres. No. Charlie? Thank you. Oh, maybe I'd play host before plunging in. My eldest son is always saying, he goes to Chilt back east. He's always telling me I show bad form. So. <laughs> yeah, well, just give me a little time on the balance. That's all I really want, Mr. Callender. Well, I'd like to now, especially that you've shown up, but I'm afraid I'll have to talk to my associates. Your associates? Yes, my partners. Well, one of them. When will I know? When I find him. You wouldn't be sweating me, would you, just to keep the hook in? That's exactly what I'm doing. But why? I came here on my knees. I don't need any reminding. I think you do. Anybody who pays their debts with bad checks needs all kinds of reminding. Well, I'm here, man. I mean, doesn't that say something? Sure it does. It says that Charlie Harrod wasn't in and out of here on time. You got the message and slammed over here before your time ran out. Wait a minute, Mr. Callender. There was no game plan. I leveled with you. I leveled. Well, either way, that one needs watching. But I, I thought you said that all he had to do was put in an appearance and then we... I said we would talk about it. The talk hardly fills me with confidence. But look, Mr. Callender, I've... Uh... I've got a son back east myself. He's six and a half. He's in a foster home. 
Some other drinks. Uh, well, to get to the point, I'm trying through Charlie's help here to get in custody and bring him out to California. A few people file charges, well, they'll probably send me up again. And if they do, Charlie can tell you any chance I have of getting the boy would probably go right out the window. I'm just asking you to consider that, that's all. Yeah, I see. All I want's a week. You know, I got three kids. And you know how I feel? No, I don't. You're a father. Yes, I am. But you're not. You're some kind of a walking accident where people are concerned. Your son particularly. Really? You have any other opinions on what my son... You damn me? right I have. Please He's your me. scapegoat. Your excuse for your gambling and your bad checks and whatever other charming activities but you Jimmy, indulge in. Just a little bit oh, wrong. stop defending him. Coming here using your child as a lever. Get to be better off never seeing his father. Who the hell are you to pinch? Stop it! You lousy boy! No, he's in the clothing business. Ah, it's a front, no. Charlie! They're all in business! No! No, Neil! Stop. You blow it all. Blow it. Let me tell you something, Mr. Callender. You can take that extra week and you can jam it. Neil. I'm gonna give you that other 8,000 bucks for breakfast tomorrow. Let go of me! Neil! 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 Neil, please! I'm sorry. Sorry, Jim. Neil, for God's sakes, where are you going to get $8,000 overnight? Don't worry about Listen it. Listen to me, it's suicide. Please, maybe I can raise a few thousand. I'll deal with it. Jeannie, who's going to deal with Jeannie? I guess you are. I'll do it gently. Airport. Fine. I gotta go out tonight. I thought that was against your rules. Now, the rules went out the window this afternoon. I figure on a big Bel Air party. Something will get me into an expensive house with a lot of other people. The Bramleys have something scheduled, but you'd never crash it. Why? Because at the core, they're very middle class, that's why. And also very security conscious. The address yeah. room. Well, all right if you insist. It's the last house on Bonner Road. What's the occasion? I think, well, I don't know. I think it's a party in honor of some general. No. Address? Address is optional. I'll be on your doorstep in a couple of hours. No, definitely not my place. If you get away with anything, I'll come to you. I'm as middle class as she is, and I'm even more security conscious. this car you talking to me sir whoever parked the car left the lights on and the keys in it i just want to know who did it i don't think it was me sir it's a good thing i came back for my cigarettes or i'd have wound up with a dead battery you have some kind of a head parking attendant around here yes mr grove he's up at the house well, let's go have a talk with mr grove uh some trouble sir i'm with the uh, security company no whoever parked my car left the lights burning that's all uh, can I trust you to tell Mr. Grove? Yes, sir. All right, then I'll forget it. I just want to make sure it's reported. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Hi. Uh, Anne-Marie Corbin. Uh, Anne-Marie Corbin, you don't have a drink. Oh, I'm buying. My husband's bringing you in. Thank you. Oh. You know my car? I think I met him with Jerry, yeah. Sorensen? Mm. I hope not, or I'll never get my drink. When those two start talking about boats... <laughs> it, well, I just spotted Jerry heading for the bar. He's by himself. Then there's some hope. <laughs> Good luck. I wonder if I could trouble you for a scotch and soda, please. 
Bob Rifle. Ted Shelby, Bob. Uh, say, have you seen Carl? Anne Marie's looking for him. Do I know him? Uh, Carl Corbett, the uh, boat nut. Oh, he's probably off in the corner with George and uh, what's his name? Jerry Sorensen. <laughs> <laughs> I've got such a lousy memory for names. Jerry Sorensen, of course. Say, you were at SC, weren't you, Teddy? Yeah, way back when, I gotta admit it. <laughs> <laughs> Makes two of us. Trojans win or lose, number one. Amen. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Mm. This was taken the night of the Watts relief. Was it? Or was it the Biafran war fund? Uh -huh. No, I'm, I'm mixed up. It was the unwed mother's ball. That was the... got the 11 o'clock sweep, you or me? I have. 11? Is that all it is? I feel like 6 in the morning. Uh-uh. doing? It's routine check, ma'am, on the hour. Listening at doors is routine? Well, I noticed the bedroom light was on. It was off at 10. Oh, that's very alert of you. I apologize. My husband probably turned it on himself. Unless one of your men did. Well, you're probably right. <gasps> Should I turn it off? No, just leave it on.
No, I want to tell you something, buddy. You throw a beautiful party. <laughs> I'm dying to see what you've got. Beautiful, Neil. And you stick yourself on this one. Mm. about 7,000 for you. 7,000. You wouldn't be trying to nail me just because I'm not blind. That's an honest figure. The truth is, I'm more likely to give you an edge if you're in a bind. That's my way. I'll settle for the seven. It'll just about get me off the hook. Good. One thousand, two, three, four, five thousand, and six. Count it. Wait a minute. You're a grand short. I loaned you that this afternoon, dear boy. Against my principles, I might add. I need it all. I need the whole seven. Well, that's unfortunate. You must consider my situation. How long do you think I'm going to sit on this stuff? Just about as long as it'll take you to pop those stones out of their settings. Come on, Herm, did I ever keep you waiting? Only when they put you away. <laughs> this kind of work, that's a recurrent prospect. I made maybe 200 separate hits for you. Doesn't that count for something? Well, if it didn't, would I be here in the middle of the night, fingering this load of baubles? Oh, I remember who you're talking to. I mean, you dig this scene. Nobody owes anybody any favors. Why should they? These things ought to be precise and impersonal. As I said, either one of us could be off the street by morning. You can keep your lousy six grand. I'll find another buyer. It's a seller's market, Neil. If you want to take all this elsewhere, that's only fair. I'll admit up front I could use these stones. Now, why don't you make up your mind? Do we or don't we have a deal? You know very well we've got a deal. I wasn't sure. Not much. Go back to your knitting, Herm. I'll call you within two hours. It's always a pleasure hearing from you.
can hardly see you. What are you doing here, Jeannie? Didn't Charlie tell you anything? Just that you had to get back to L.A. in a hurry, but nobody had to tell me anything. I watched you since you woke up this morning and then through lunch and Reno. Not now, Jeannie. I'm on my way out. Well, I'm only sorry it took me this long to realize how much steam you've been building up and what kind of trouble you're in. I told you, Jeannie, not now. Where are you going? Yeah, tell me. I'm a big girl. All right. I met a topless dancer last week. Especially spilling drinks with her hands tied behind her back. I met a date to take her out for a milkshake. I think we can find true happiness. It's not another woman and you know it. I'll see you. Now, what is it, Neil? Tell me, I want to help you and Charlie Harrod wants to help you. What is it? Is it money? I'll loan you some. Yeah, yeah, it's money. It's money and you can't help me. Because I created the problem. And I have to solve it. The way I've been solving it since I was 18. By stealing, Jeannie. By breaking and entering. I'm a burglar. I've been sent up for it twice already. Right now, I'm on my way out to steal again. Because it's my trade. My vocation. Any more questions before you give me back my key and go out that door for the last time? I don't die that easily. No key until you tell me what these past two months have meant to you. This morning you want to back off, do it. If I ever turn this corner, I'll call you. You still haven't answered my question. I don't intend to. Look. What about your son? Are you doing this for him?
Let's forget it. Yeah, probably walk right past it. Before I hit the empty house. someone else with you. I'm off the case. Because you don't want help, Neil. I can't help you anymore. You don't want a lawyer. You want a pallbearer. I'm sorry you feel that way, Charlie. I'm sorry, too. Because you're a hell of a guy. What's this? I read your uh, file in the parole office, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're the kid that uh, moved your cigarettes. 
Now look, just to help yourself to a carton, man, I'll take your... I don't want any cigarettes, man. I don't want any cigarettes. I need some money. I figure you got some money. Yeah, well, you're wrong, kid. That's yesterday's news. I'm just a friendly neighborhood salesman. Hey, just don't. No, just take it easy. Cool it. Okay, look. I need some, I need some money, and I need it now. Now, are you going to get it for me? You're going to stand here and dance like that. Yeah, well, I'd like to help you, kid. But all I got some loose change. This is the latest favorite broadcasting station, transmitting from the top of Mount Lowe. Speaking for the staff and management, we wish you all a good night. Thank <laughs> you.